Hi everybody, it's Michael here with uh, part two of my series on enabling uh, and tuning the bed auto leveling functions that are uh, that have just been installed into the Marlin firmware on your Maker Farm Prusa i3 uh, RepRap 3D printer. In uh, part one, we uh, covered uh, assembling the hardware and getting that all ready to go and then getting that installed. In part two, we're going to be talking about uh, what changes to make to the Marlin firmware in order to enable the functions that have been recently uh, installed in that firmware. Now, uh, I'm going to assume, for the purposes of this video, that you have already gotten the latest version of Marlin from the official Marlin GitHub repository. If you've just got uh, firmware that you downloaded from the Maker Farm website, at least as of yesterday, uh, that was an older version of Marlin that does not actually have any of the bed auto leveling features built into it, uh, so that's not going to work. So you are going to need to go to the the actual Marlin uh, repository, download the most recent version, and then make, and then get it set up for, uh, to work on your Maker Farm Prusa i3 or whatever 3D printer you have. Uh, and if you're not there, uh, I'm going to have a, a blog post online in the next day or two. Uh, it's mostly written now. That's going to uh, outline all the different um, uh, values that need to be changed in order to get that to work happily with the Maker Farm uh, Prusa i3. Uh, again, for right now, I'm going to assume that you've already done that, uh, and um, if you haven't, then I'll put I'll put that link in the um, uh, in the notes for this video, so you'll be able to go ahead and get that done. Because today, all we're doing is covering the uh, the changes you need to make in order to get the bed auto leveling functions working. And so uh, we'll get started on that right away. What I have here is just a scratch copy, so to speak, of the Marlin firmware. Uh, this is what I downloaded from the site, and this has had no changes made to it so far. And we're going to be looking at the uh, configuration.h file. I'm just going to open that in uh, um, gedit. I'm using Ubuntu 13.10, uh, uh, and uh, gedit is the standard uh, text editor. But you can use any text editor that you like with whatever operating system you're using. So I'm up here at the top of the file. I'm just going to start scrolling down. The uh, section I'm looking at changing is uh, uh, a little bit below mechanical settings. And then I'm looking for the next header, uh, which is going to be right here, bed auto leveling. And if you don't find this in your configuration.h file, then you've got an older version of Marlin, and uh, you're going to need to go um, get one that's a little more current, because it, if it doesn't have this in it, then we can't enable it. Uh, first change we're going to make is uh, right up above where the bed auto leveling is, we have this define right here, which is the define minimum uh, software end stops true. And if we leave that on, we're going to run into some trouble later. So I'm just going to define that to false. And what this one does is it uh, doesn't allow the firmware to move any axis to uh, basically below zero. And in part three, when we're actually getting this calibrated and set up, we are going to have to move at least two axes to values that are below zero. And if this is set to uh, true, then we're not going to be able to do that. So I'm just going to make sure that is set to false. Now, here I'm going to do a whole bunch of stuff with just two little keystrokes here. Uh, right under the bed auto leveling, we see this is a define that has been commented out, which is define enable auto bed leveling. And I'm just going to comment, or uh, excuse me, I'm going to uncomment that. So now we have now enabled the auto bed leveling. So uh, now are we done with getting this ready to go? Absolutely not. There's a few other things we need to do, but this is the one that's going to get us started. So we have now told Marlin that we are going to be doing uh, auto bed leveling just by removing those two uh, slash marks. Uh, the first values that I'm going to be changing are these right here, which are the positions on the bed to do the probing. And as you can see, we're defining the left probe bed position at 15, the right probe uh, bed position at 170, the back probe bed position at 180, and the front probe bed position at 20. So this is basically the max and the minimum uh, on the uh, or for the x and the y axes for where the probes are going to happen. My suggestion is for right now, let's just be a little conservative and set these to a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 150. And that's going to keep your carriage away from the edges of all the axes and kind of keep it um, keep the probe positions in the middle uh, of the bed a little bit more. Now we will come back after we uh, after we start to get this set up and in part three we'll move these further out toward the corner because obviously if you're trying to figure out if it's trying to mathematically represent a plane 
which is what it's doing, then uh, you know, probing them farther apart is going to give you a much more accurate um, uh, uh, representation of where the bed is, and it's going to make it a lot better. But for now, just while we're setting this up, we're going to keep it conservative and just set these to uh, a low of 50 and a high of 150 on each axis. Moving right along, these are some other numbers that we're not going to change now, but these are going to become critical numbers in, uh, in part three when we're actually setting this up. What these numbers are right here are the offsets to the probe relative to the extruder tip. And so it's going to be the hot end position minus the probe position, basically. So right now, there, and there's no way really to give a good approximation for what these ought to be. Uh, if I told you what my values are, uh, if you have anything that's remotely different from mine, if, if, if you have a slightly different uh, micro switch or if, if my uh, servo arm printed out just a fraction of a millimeter smaller than yours, then these, are, these values are not going to be useful. So I'm going to say pay attention to where these are, know that we're going to come back and adjust these. But these basically, again, are the offsets of the probe, probe from where the extruder is. So we'll leave those alone for now, but keep them in mind. Um, for the XY travel speed, uh, I like to keep this kind of slow, uh, just because it, I mean it doesn't. It's not going to be that slow. Uh, Alex Burrow recommends changing this to 6,000, which is still, and this is millimeters per minute, so that's still 100 millimeters per second, uh, which is a still a pretty good rate. Uh, I've I have discovered that at 4,000, uh, my motors don't get. They, there's no uh, steps being skipped or anything. And really, I save so much time by having auto bed leveling working at all that uh, you know, I, I will forgive it for going a little more slowly when uh, in between probes. So I've got that set to 4,000. Feel free to set that to 6,000 if you like, but I just find this is a very safe number. Uh, these numbers right here, the uh, raise before probing and the raise, I'm sorry, Z raise before probing and Z raise between probings, are th these are pretty good numbers unless you've got a really low profile uh, hot end, like if you have a Prusa nozzle or something like that that's really short, you might need, need to increase these a little bit. But for um, if you've got the Magma or an Alu uh, hot end V4 or a J head, these should be just fine. Okay, so right now, that is all we have to do in that section uh, for right now in order to get that, uh, to get that working. And uh, I am going to scoot on down now to the next section where we are going to enable the servos. And here we have this header, which is the RC servo support, uh, sponsored by Trinity Labs, reworked by uh, Code Christmas or Code Xmas. I'm not sure exactly how he or she likes to say that. In any case, uh, so we've got a little bit of work to do here. Uh, we are going to uncomment this define right here, uh, which is the define number of servos three. And we're going to change that to one. And all this is doing is saying that we are, in fact, using the servos uh, on the ramped board, and uh, and that we since we have one, then we have servo number zero. Essentially, is the only one we have active. You can leave that at three if you want. It doesn't hurt anything, uh, but uh, uh, you, we are technically only going to be using one for this project. We also need to uncomment these two defines right here for the servo end stops and also the servo end stop angles. And what we're doing here on this value, the servo end stops uh, x, y, and z. Minus one means that it is um, disabled, and anything other than minus one means it's enabled. So what we've got is X and Y are disabled as far as having end stops on servos, uh, but the Z end stop is now uh, on, uh, we've, we've enabled that, so that is going to be on a servo. So Marlon is expecting to find a servo um, uh, activation for the Z end stop, so that's what we want. Uh, these two numbers here uh, for X, and Y, we can leave those at zero because we don't even have those activated. These two numbers right here are going to define the angles uh, that we're going to set the servo to to extend and retract the probe. Now, we're going to probably be adjusting this a little bit more in part three when we're actually getting this all configured. But for right now, we can start off with 165 degrees uh, for an extended angle and then 65 degrees for a retracted angle. And again, that's just going to say that when it's when the probe is extended, it's going to put the servo at 165 degrees, and then when it's retracted, it's 65 degrees. And again, we will we will fine tune this in uh, in the next part. So that right there is uh, everything we need to do in uh, in the configuration.h file to begin uh, our configuration of the auto bed leveling uh, functions. 
So you can go ahead and uh, save the changes here and flash this uh, to your, your ramp sport and we will be uh, on our way. So that's, uh, that's it for part two. Uh, and part three should be coming out here in just a couple of days, in which case we'll be uh, uh, we'll talk about how to actually tune this, how to def uh, set those uh, offset numbers up, which is going to be probably the most important part. And then we'll uh, we'll practice. Uh, we'll also look at the extension and retraction numbers on the servo and make sure those are about right. And we will just get this whole thing tuned up and uh, and then be on our way. So uh, that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. I sure do appreciate. Uh, um, all you guys support and if anybody has any questions or anything to add or especially if you've seen that I've made a mistake or I'm about to run into something that's really uh, dangerous and awful I sure would love to hear about train wrecks before I experience them so once again thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time